Uh, complex, excitable, AP Gaming, real, mysterious, eloquent. Welcome to Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader, Tide of Iron, Season 2, Episode 17, on Quiet Part 2. Oh, I didn't give you a name, that's right. I know. Oh, I and if over. you hadn't yeah. said anything, <laughs> yeah, if you hadn't right. said anything, no one would have known, because I was going to let you slide this one time. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. But let, let me also point out, by the way, to the audience, Arthur was a lot more animate in our little pre-show, but he's, he's clearly putting this on. <laughs> Damn it, James! <laughs> I was going to point out, I was going to be nice. I, I was <laughs> like, Arthur, I mean, you could have eaten your mashed potatoes. And you I did eat the mashed potatoes. Got that. Okay, good. So I then did. you have nothing to complain about. I, I didn't have anything to complain about. Listen, I was... Grimdark was... James delivering the grimdark truth. I just... You got... <laughs> James always ruins my intros when I do shit like this. <laughs> he gets to the joke before. Well, Pondo does it too. He gets to the joke when I'm telling it. Oh, you it's guys like have a game. You but, have but, no uh, respect for the artistry and acting that goes into some of these intros. You just cut the knees out on it. All right, Pondo, just go ahead. Just just do your intro now. <laughs> I haven't been going on. I have much going on. I've just been watching Cyberpunk, getting caught up with that. Uh, I heard you were watching watch Solaris Nights. I was also watching Solaris Nights. I heard that on the YouTube comments because you comment on Solaris Nights. Yes. I, I like to add in my my tidbit. Yeah, How about yeah. the latest episode? What an incredible ending. That's never before been seen. It was interesting. It was definitely a, a shift in the scenario. Probably won't happen again for a while. <laughs> I can, I, I, I can think of at least one more situation exactly like that one where it will happen again, but it won't be for a little while. Uh, yep, that's been interesting to watch. Uh, I kind of just been chatting with the guys because some reason I'm still in the stables chat. AP hasn't. Why would I remove yet. you from that? I don't know. The people you need to be available so that people can invite you to their fights. Yeah. That's why. You also give good advice sometimes, Pondo. Has anybody asked me for advice? Have Does I anyone advice? ever ask you for advice? And yet <laughs> somehow know. you still manage to say it. <laughs> Damn, there's my <laughs> bird now. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> I don't. I don't even know where that came from, Pondo. I, know, I don't know I, where I know that spice I know I self sabotage definitely, but I was like, "Hey, you should probably do this instead." It's like, "Oh, thank you." And everybody was like, "Why?" <laughs> That's uh, a time of total warfare for you. Then, j then James took my place. Yeah, as, as the as the rules and tactician guy. Yeah. I don't know. The Oath of Windowsteel casts is pretty afraid of. You. Well, was was pretty afraid of you until uh, until you came in as as Melvin. Melvin. <laughs> yeah, I can't. And then they were like, "Ah, oh, best friend." <laughs> well, kind of. I sell nice stuff. Uh, yeah. I, I, it would be fun to be a, like an actual like fighting antagonist, but my my schedule doesn't allow for that at the moment. Unless they just like pushed up like a full, a full like four hour event, not just like two hours they typically have. It'll be easy once you have kids. <laughs> I know that's a lie. Wow. I know it is. <laughs> just like just when I popped in, I saw you pop in. Your kid was like right behind you. Yeah, that's right. I was transforming a transformer for my child. Like, I've been taking notes the entire time from essentially when you started, like, as a player on A Time of Total Warfare onward. And, like, that whole period before, like, uh, like three months before we announced that I was having a kid, I'm just listening to you and Rad at the same time and just <laughs> be like, oh, God. <laughs> It's funny, like the first maybe month of like uh, uh, before we announced it, you, you consistently it was like, "Don't worry, Jave, wait till you have kids." Each <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, internally, I'm just like, "Oh God, no." Well, I mean, uh, Cotton seemed clucky, so I, I I assumed it was inevitable. So <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. No. James, you want me to change the name of the episode to Countenance? 
Well, that's what I, 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 I've been, as Pono's indicated, I've been in a battle of wills with a nine-year-old all morning, so. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm, all right. I'm my, I'm my B game right They're now. They're going to be real confused when they look at the episode title and then hear the intro sequence, but. Yep. <laughs> fine, we got it in there. That's Under fine, the they skip the intro sequence. Oof, that hurts. I don't think anybody really skips the intro sequence. I think they pretty much stay. Oh, and I watch know it. for a fact that people skip the intro sequence. Oh. And then complain. They're like, you know what would save me more time if I didn't have to skip the intro sequence because there wasn't one. No, I was I, back back <clears throat> when I was a, a viewer and watching a time like catching up on the time. You don't still way. view? I do. Spoon, I do. You've abandoned view, me. But, but, I, but I'm current viewer now. Ah. Um. So so the intros are a little bit more relevant. <laughs> um, but I, I it was usually like uh like a 60 40 usually in in favor of skip like un, un, unless there was like a big um uh like pop culture reference or something at the very beginning that i was like ooh, i want to know what their opinions are on this i would usually skip look my my early ap experience was mostly only watching the battle skipping all the role play moving into watching the role play as well skipping the intros moving into watching the intros and then tuning out the rest of the show <laughs> oh, ow! Are you still listening? Just you know, like while painting or something. Okay, like, yeah. all right, okay. Pondo, I you... think I can honestly say that I'm probably the only one here that has only ever been a player in Arthur's stuff. I, I don't think I've ever been much of a viewer of your content. So I also don't day. watch my own stuff. So I got you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are so you are like, the product, not the customer, Henley. Yeah, <laughs> like it was. It was one of those one of those weird moments where like I was starting role playing stuff and Arthur was doing role playing stuff for a while. I don't know how long you were doing it ahead of me, but um, a while. It was just one of those things. Where it was just like, hey man, we should do something. And I'm we like, should I collab. Don't know. We should collab. <laughs> I think I said something like, yeah, we should promote each other's channels, and you were like, fuck that, let's just do a show together. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's what it was, and and then we made the campaigners guild, and then everyone ate each other. <laughs> campaigners guild didn't last two weeks, and it took like a month and a half to put together. I remember because I had I had to fucking scratch some backs to get that fucking team set up at Twitch too. Wow. Good God. Yeah. Um, and then everyone was like, "No, I'm the most selfish motherfucker on the face." Of, like literally, consistently, everyone was just like, "No, my viewers, bitch." Stay away from them. I'm like oh, yeah, that's not the point, but okay, sure. <laughs> and now everyone's dead. <laughs> I think the only person who's alive in that campaign is good is Bubba. I think that's the only person that's still around. Oh, I'm but... still here. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, outside of you, obviously. Because I'm literally on your show right liver. now. That's fucking morbid. Holy shit. <laughs> Everybody is dead. Everyone's dead. <laughs> Well, I mean, like, Swagula left, like, Encounter Roleplay. I don't know. They're Swagula shows up yeah, from yeah, time to time. But, but they're still alive. Like, they're still functioning out in the world. <laughs> they're, they're, they're dead to Dave, right? Yeah, dead to me. <laughs> exactly. Dave does not have object permanence. If you can't see it anymore, <laughs> <Yeah>. it's gone. <laughs> it's typical. <laughs> typical. I know occasionally once in, once in a blue moon we'll do a stream, but... Um, Pondo, you got yeah, anything else going on? Or is this a good time to segue to Henley? Uh, yeah, that, essentially, the only other thing I've been working on is I've been doing up some uh, writing up for a potential 40k narrative campaign. <gasps> a narrative campaign? What yeah, even is that? It's, it's essentially doing like 40k, but only doing like narrative battles and missions and stuff. Okay. I mean, that's what if you have you actually read crusade the new crusade stuff yeah that's i want to be utilizing some of the rules to that but doing something else the idea yeah. is to have like four to five players going at it in a scenario whereas like one faction is the inhabiting planet another one might be let's say like the necrons it might be their tomb world they wake up they're like ah essentially having a battle uh battle royale scenario but have it make relative sense okay now let me throwing it in there let me throw out an idea for you okay yeah all right so some human and some eldar and some space marines are fighting over a world right uh -huh. the necrons wake up and then there's like 
a beat starting and they start snapping their fingers. Michael Jackson music starts playing. Everybody has a dance battle royale to dance until you drop and the Necrons win because they have unlimited stamina. For a okay. second then, <laughs> I thought you were going with the plot of the second Dawn of War game. I don't know what that is. No, but my plot's then, better. <laughs> and then you could have the the um, the, the the amazing star, uh, star space marine general Kevin Bacon come in and save the day. That's true. He could yeah. he could save Earth a second time. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Pondo, that I can ruin for you? Your childhood, no, perhaps. Time. Nope, that is all for now. Okay. Uh, and have you actually seen the, the blooper screen for, scene from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy where Ronan actually does engage in the dance battle? Yes. No, no, it's no. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, looking boy. that up right now. It's hilarious. <laughs> Dave, it's your intro. Hey, everyone. I had, um, I had wisdom teeth pulled like two days ago. I have never been so frustrated with how strong my teeth are in my entire life because it took like over an hour to get one tooth out of my fucking mouth. It was insane. I, they literally had to like, you know, foot on my chest, sort of like uh, try and rip this fucking tooth out of my mouth. I swear to God, I was this close to having a dislocated jaw. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Like I've literally, my entire mouth is like filled with stitches right now. And I've been spitting up blood for the past two days. Um, it's not a fun experience. Haven't eaten anything um, in a long time. Um, I've forgotten what food is actually like, to be honest with you. Um, I've literally just been eating uh, like smoothies and shit. So yeah, I'm a grumpy boy. I'm in constant pain and I'm drugged to your belief right now so you yeah, know that's fun um but you know it's almost easter so at least i got that going for me uh i don't know what else um the yeah uh, i mean wait when was the last time we played i had this last week last time. yeah yeah uh, yeah, yeah, I had the time. Yeah, asking, asking how, how it's gone. Is it all healed up yet? Or? Yeah, it's basically healed now. Like, um, I, I can maybe show. Like, you can't really see it because it's mm -hmm. whatever. So, on the fourteenth of April, I'm going in for my second session. It's going to be like eight hours of just a dude needling me constantly. Yeah. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, and yeah. That's me, I guess. Cool intro, Dave. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, speaking of someone who's going to have a cool intro, Big Spoon. Uh, yeah, so I got my first jab of the vaccine today. Uh, so I go back in three weeks uh, to get that second one and be uh, COVID vaccinated. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Um, be able to actually go... Uh, Go hang out with some people. Oh, foolish spoon. Most of those vaccines are ineffective against the variants that are rolling around. You'll yeah. die. You'll still die. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have that and uh, been watching Solaris Nights. I haven't watched this latest episode, but I'll probably uh, do that tomorrow or tonight after after this show. Um, let's see. Killed the killed the Hydra in in Eric's Forbidden Marches game last week. That was that was pretty fun. But uh, yeah, that's uh, started watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Ooh, um, I could not get through the beginning of the second episode. It was rough. Uh, I have I haven't watched the second episode yet. Yeah, I've only watched the first. Yeah, episode the too. first episode was some real motherfucking shit, and the second episode <laughs> basically picks up immediately from right there. Yeah, like I, I mean, hey, hold up. So, is the show good? Um, I enjoyed the first episode, but there wasn't a whole lot of like. Yeah, there wasn't a lot going th there on. There wasn't a lot. There. The other thing to note is that it, it looks different than the other Marvel series is so far. I don't know what it is. 
I feel like whoever's doing the lighting for this series was hired right off of the Netflix Marvels. Because yeah. there's a lot of, like, blue mood lighting for all of Bucky's scenes. Look, mm-hmm. it's slow, Dave. It's slow, and it's gonna... Yeah. It's definitely gonna... It's a house of cards, and they're getting ready to smash all of the cards, and then shred all the cards, and then just set the cards on fire. Yeah, so I, I, I wish I, I could... I never uh, thought Bucky was particularly charismatic, and I didn't think... Was there, it's not Rhodes. What is his name? Falcon? No, what's his uh, Sam, name? Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson. Damn. I didn't think he was particularly charismatic either. You're right? crazy. Uh, you're, so, you're insane. So yeah, so I so I like I, I like Anthony Mackey a lot as an actor. Anthony um, Mackey loves Marvel. Yeah. And, and and I think overall Anthony Mackey's just a good fucking dude. Um, that's from, that's from Falcon. All the, yeah. From all from all the interviews and stuff I've seen him in. Um so Oh, um, but you put him in a scene with Paul Rudd, and Paul Rudd will fucking crush him. Yeah, like, you know what uh, I mean. Well, like, because it's Paul Rudd, but I mean, come on. <laughs> um, so um, you know, I'll, I'll be watching the second episode, and we'll see where to, where we go from there. Because certainly the trailers built a lot on the the interplay between the two main characters, and we didn't see that at all in the first episode. Right, right. So I, I need to see more to see how that plays out in the actual show. Yeah. And like, so, so I, so my, my recommendation so far is wait until there's several episodes out and then binge them. Like, mm. but uh, yeah, other than that, not a, not a whole lot going on for me right now. Uh, okay. I just watched the uh, dance off rag uh, g- <laughs> gag reel. It was, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> the, the one thing I will say about Marvel movies, I, I really like the timing on the movies a lot. Like they're really well cut. Like, did you hear about the fact that the, that the, that they want to make a six hour end game cut? Like apparently they oh, have enough a combination of the two. Six... Interesting. No, not a combination. Just end game will be like a six hour feature. Like they're going to, like they have enough cut footage from it to make six I'm hours. I'm good. I heard all about how we could release the Snyder cut at any moment if we just believed hard enough in Zack Snyder. And then they're like, okay, we're going to do it. But he needs six months and $100 million. Fuck that noise. I'm not watching a four-hour DC movie that wasn't good the first time. And I'm definitely not watching it a second time only in black and white. Y'all motherfuckers is crazy. It's not in black and white. And it, it's in four and by in four three. By three. Four by three. That's ridiculous. <laughs> no, they're that re-releasing days? it only in black and white. That, that might actually make it better because I honestly thought that there was two. <laughs> honestly, the movie was very bad. The movie was very bad. I thought <laughs> yeah, it was bad the first time. Six months is not going to make it better. But what I'm saying is, I think that movie had way too many distraction CG elements in it. Right? Like it was. It was. Or always all the top. Like I'm pretty sure 90 percent of that movie was filmed on a green screen. I can almost guarantee that. <laughs> given, given oh, the, the movie I, came I, I fell asleep at the cinema watching that movie. So the mm. only movie wow. I've ever fallen asleep at the cinema watching was the second Hobbit movie, when he's talking to Smog. I was like, this is the <laughs> most boring scene I've ever seen. That's yeah. But they, they took a, a short children's book and made it into three feature yeah. films. So, you know. <laughs> some of it was good. Like, some of it was bad. It definitely was not as bad as I remembered it being because I've seen worse since then. So Our standards they, have dropped. Yeah. They, they missed a golden opportunity with the Hobbit movie to make it two movies. And you call it there. And then back, and again? back again? You're crazy. You're crazy. That's insane. First off, back again would be like 20 minutes long. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just, it's the post credit scene of the, of the movie. <sighs> All right. Let me see here. Now would be the time for me to do my intro. Uh, I played Mech Mechanic Simulator, which I'll refer to James because he has also played it. Um, I was surprised to see that James hadn't painted a mech. As, as soon as possible. I kind of thought that oh. it, I would be listening to James during this intro be like, so I was playing Mech Mechanic Simulator and I spent 30 hours painting one mech painstakingly. Here's here's my Thousand Suns version of the Sakura basic platformer. 
<laughs> you can see here, I really did the crown molding on the boots. I don't know what any of that means. Anyway. So, let me ask you a real quick question, there, uh, Arthur. Yeah? That's a Playway game. So did you feel the Playway garbage I don't understand seeping into that product? what you're saying. Okay, so Playway games are... There's a, they're, they're a Polish developer, Polish publisher, okay. and they have this notorious habit of making like fake Steam profiles for games. And then when people be like, oh, that looks good. I'm going to wish this that. And then they take those numbers and be like, oh, people actually want this game. Let's make a game based on this fake trailer that we made. So a lot of the products that they release are like... Are different from their initial pitch. Yeah. Or not so much different from the initial pitch, but like just sort of like shitty quality sort of thing like they made like you know the thief simulator game right and that sort of has that sort of like okay there's one tv uh there's one tv model that they have for this entire neighborhood and you know there's only four sets of sneak like it feels like a indie game that a triple a publisher makes right like that that's sort of the the feeling that those games have and it's because they they cost next to nothing to make and they just release them in I don't know. It's a weird one. I don't know so what to tell this... you. It, do, it definitely feels like there isn't enough to do in the game. I kind of feel yep. like I've already hit a wall of mm -hmm. replace parts, clean part, rust part, do the optional stuff, and that's it. Uh, yep. And my stock market went insane. Uh, I was playing, and like they were like, here's the stock market. And I was like, I don't know. Is it a good time to invest? And then seconds after I said that, my stock market was like, what if all of the companies that you could invest in had the highest possible stock price? <laughs> like they immediately, the whole market was just all the way at the ceiling. I don't, it seems like a bug or something. I don't know. Uh, also, Empyrean, I started releasing some of the Empyrean video. Release the AP cut. It was it so is not my best work. Seven hours long in black and white and four by three. <laughs> Fuck you. It was two. The second video is dropping tomorrow. It's two 18 minute long videos. Dave is in them. Oh, okay. It's it was the, the first I flight don't of the determination. I don't remember signing any release forms. Out. <laughs> well, you were you were there when I said this is being recorded. We were in the live recording channel. I don't know that there could be any more verbal consent than that particular one. Uh, let's see how that holds up in court, huh? If you, if you want to sue me over this, Dave, that's going to be rough because I don't no, remember. Give me, give me that. Give me the three dollars you make of the of the joke video. We'll be fine. I don't okay. mind reciting anything for any of your shows. Um, three dollars. That's pretty generous. <laughs> <laughs> for this one i i think it'll be lucky to get more than 50 views it is not good and you get to see me doing table or uh, not tabletop fps game worst practices going around corners while reloading not shooting any of the there was, teleporters there was there was one i because i watched a little bit of it today and i, and I, I it was your viewpoint and all of a sudden there's just a, a blast of gunfire and you go who's shooting who's shooting who's shooting uh, that happened gets, several times in both yeah. videos because no one's ever like i'm being engaged i just have to go who is shooting it happens in all of our space battles too. Sometimes people just start shooting into space for no reason. Yeah. Look, I, all I wanted to do was get onto the scanner and it fired a rocket when I hit the button. It's not my fault, man, okay? <laughs> just say that then so that everybody's not going, oh my God, runner attack. It's just like that time when the shields were down. Yeah. Oh my God. That happened. I'm like, AP, hey, put your shields up. AP, hey, put your shields up. <laughs> like, we didn't know that the shield did. We didn't know how shields work. We didn't know how anything worked. Okay, that's all I'm saying. Um, so I, I made those FPS. in like a two-hour period at three o'clock in the morning. So if my voice acting sounds kind of like it's three o'clock in the morning and I've been working on a video for two hours, that's why. <laughs> if I had known that it was had some FPS shooting in it, I probably I would be interested in it. You know, we're about right, to restart what? the server next week because my announcement is is that tomorrow is the last day of our current server. Uh, we're launching oh. the attack on the Xerox homeworlds. We've got a ton of tanks 
We're going to a world where Spoon will be able to do one push-up. <laughs> where it's not four because oh these these are rated for they're rated for four G. They were the tanks are rated for four G. We went to a four and a half yeah. G world and mm-hmm. I could drive even if every other person on the expedition could only slam their nose into the ground and whine about it. I Whoa. was capable. I had the chauffeur spoon out by creating a smooth, <laughs> gentle yeah. ramp for him and to I, climb up. Like, yeah, you, you say you say spoon, but I'm driving your tank. Like, it's your tank your when tank. you check it out of the vehicle. When you sign so, it out from the hangar from the cargo master, it's your tank now. <laughs> All right, I'm done yelling at spoon. <laughs> That's it. We're Old restarting the server. Uh, in the next few days, we're going to be doing Reforged Eden, so there'll be multiplayer story missions. There'll be the single player story missions should theoretically be enabled. The whole game will be slowed down so that we don't progress as quickly. And there's like four or five times as much content to do. Um, yeah, because we kind of got to a point where like we went into space. I, I took a Once break we started to being work. able to drill things in space, our ability to gain minerals was, was 10 times faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in an hour we like could I, do what it took us days to do i just remember building a cv and being like oh yeah normal steel that's about what we're at right now i take a break for like one day come back and he's just like well i made a armada of combat steel fleets with, with tier two shields and it's like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, well, that's because arthur went oh hey well, i can i can mine asteroids now I'm going to go strip mine every single system. Uh, what Arthur did was say, sleep is for the weak. It's true. I did say <laughs> that. I was very tired. I'm actually still tired right now. Um, and if I look like I'm crazy, that's only because I can't get my hair cut for fear that I will die from a horrifying virus. I really want the vaccine, guys. Supposedly, my people will get back to me this week about it. Who knows? Have you considered shaving your head? I did that before. It didn't work very well. Like did, your did, head did didn't miss. Accept. Like, how, how, how did you How did you I'm confused by that. It's, behind. Well. it's the behind part that's <laughs> oh, the problem. Okay. Yeah. Fuck. Jeez. <laughs> Just to your intro, I, James. <laughs> if you can keep uh, it less than ten minutes, it'll be a record for this show. So Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't gather it. Um yeah, so I had a pretty good week. I started my new Star Wars campaign this week. Uh, so we're doing uh, very force heavy in the Mandalorian era. So we had our first session, although uh, because of miscommunication, my wife who was going to play turned up too late and then was sort of shitty about it. So uh, we'll, we'll get into the next session. But uh, that was pretty good. I got to the new Drakari stuff yesterday, came out for 40K. So this is the Dark Eldar, if you're not familiar with it, looking at you, Dave. Um which is pretty cool. I, speaking of Crusade stuff, Pondo, <laughs> uh, I think that they've finally done Crusade really well from a narrative point of view with the Dark Eldar stuff. So it's got this whole thing where when you make a Crusade list, you pick one character who is this aspiring warlord trying to ma- mark out their territory in the Dark City. And as you do each game, you get raid points you can then use to go and claim districts of Kamora, which right. gives, you, gives your army like permanent benefits. But the more districts you get, the greater chance your warlord will turn up to the to the battle with a battle scar, having just survived an assassination attempt from Azrabel Vect for getting too uppity. Ah. So that was pretty cool. But um, I did actually get to play 40k yesterday too. We only had time for one game, um, and then I beat my opponent uh, in the first turn, like before I, I, I tabled him before he got to act at all. So we're like, okay, well, I guess I'll play a second game. Uh, and that one was actually a really good game. It ran out to a, a complete draw at the end, which is pretty rare in ninth edition given the high score values. But uh, I will say that I, I really think the victory should have been my opponents. I just happened to eke out a draw in the way that the uh, the mission was being scored. But uh, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's, uh, and Arthur, don't sorry. That's a, that's a really hard task to, to do a draw in ninth edition, considering. Well, it it was good because in the last turn of the game, depending on how we rolled all three results were possible. Like, you know, I could have won, he could have won, or we could have drawn. Right. Yeah. Um, it didn't quite come down to the very last dice roll. For the for the very last dice roll, it was, the outcome was decided, but uh, it was pretty close. The second last dice roll could have pitched the game either way. Um, that was pretty cool. Uh, and Arthur, the reason I didn't... Uh, so, so what happened was I originally was playing Mech Mechanic Simulator Demo, 
And then when you started streaming, I realized, oh, okay, the full game's obviously coming out now. So I didn't watch your stream at first because <laughs> I didn't want to be spoiled. So I, I, <laughs> I played the game and I played for like the first three hours. And then I went and watched your stream and went, why was I worried about being spoiled by Arthur getting through this quickly? Um, not be, only because I played a lot of those. Well, for one thing, you played yeah. almost twice as much as me. Yeah, but I mean, also like the whole thing where like I played that, that style of game before, like the whole, you, like you, you were struggling with the concept of working out which pieces to remove before you got to the piece you wanted to remove, like realizing that the, the things that are in the way glow red when you mouse over it. Whereas like, that's the same way it's been in all those sort of games. Um, it hurts you to say struggling, but that is in fact what happens. So I will have to accept that. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i mean look I, I was sort of hopeful that it'd be more of a storyline because they sort of implied this whole you're an illegal mechanic and um, only for about thought, 10 seconds i know I one know. Well, job I they, yeah well also because i noticed it's got story mission oh no so a uh, mission mission jobs coming up so i haven't reached level where you get missions yet but that'll be interesting to see well, if you're three um, hours in and you haven't gotten it yet then um <laughs> yeah uh, I, well, chat wants to know what your what your armies were in your Warhammer 40k games. Oh, okay, sorry. So uh, I I beat my opponent in the first game. I had Imperial Fist versus his Drakari, um, and then in the second game, I did my Eldari versus his Drakari. So Craft Worlds versus Dark Eldar. Um, so yeah, he he was trying out the new the new the new rule book, having just picked it up. But it was a very unusual Drakari army. It was mostly mechanized. Only like only a singles, uh, two squads of troops. That was it. Mm. That does sound odd, considering. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, good. Yeah, it's, I mean, there's supposed to be like a lot of speeders, but they're also supposed to be like a lot of troops. We're all on this, or like infantry, right? Yeah, we're only playing fifty power level, which is equivalent to a thousand point game. Oh, his okay. thousand, his fifty power level was one squad of cabalites, one squad of scourges, an archon, two ravagers, and two void raven bombers. Okay. Um. And and the fact that he got first turn meant that uh, in the second in the second game this is uh, meant that he got his void raven bombers off and the bombs are ridiculous now they do d6 mortal wounds to every unit with in a six inch radius of a spot they fly over on a four plus so like his two void raven bombers cranked out like fifteen mortal wounds in his first movement phase total. Um, and that's even after I, I was playing Ulthway, which have um, six plus feel no pains. So yeah, that was I, I really did start the game on the back foot there. But as I said, I ended the game with a single Eldar Guardian left, and he still had two Ravages, a Void Raven Bomber, and his Archon. But on the score, it's a draw. But you know, because <laughs> he, he literally in our in our campaign, he's played seventeen games and won two. So I really wanted him to you know feel. Uh, so I, I said to him like you know you should have won that game. To be honest, you know, because he need, he needed the victory. He's it's better than the other player who's played fourteen games and won none, but um, still, yeah. Uh, but just to finish off, Arthur, uh, <laughs> you've actually like Mech Mechanic Simulator. I have been a little bit underwhelmed by. You know, I'm glad I only paid twenty bucks for it. Um, but it's I'm actually thinking about now doing a short stream of Car Mechanic Simulator. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, don't do that one. Do uh, my summer car. Yeah, but do my summer car. Way better. You, 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 but I don't. I don't want to have to stream urinating. You know, like you do in that game. <laughs> what? So, yeah. My what summer the car. Fuck? Literally the best yeah. mechanic game you could ever possibly imagine. It's yeah. great. And anyway, but like, yeah, I mean, yeah. You're I forced mean, to urinate. No, Is you. This some you basically. BDSM shit. <laughs> no, it's. What are you? It's what are you into, Dave? Jesus Christ! I Look, love this is how easy money, Dave. It's so easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's free real it's estate. Low, low hanging fruit. Go ahead, please go ahead. So, my summer car, if you don't know, is an amazing game about a man, a, 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 a boy who turns into a man, and he's given his first car by his parents, which was the car that he was conceived in. But it's all <laughs> it's all fucked. It's broken. It's completely fucked. Like it's basically like a shell of what it fr used to be. So you have a majority of the car parts, but you need to uh, spend some of your money to purchase beer, uh, hot dogs, hamburgers, um, and car parts <laughs> to to get this car together. So basically, you have to do like weird mini game jobs and stuff like that. It's it's such a 
it's such a gem of an indie game. It's, it's such a, a beautiful later. game. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, a lot of people who've played it get really into it because it's like you can, unlike the mechanic simulator and stuff like that, you can actually build the car, realize you've forgotten something inside the car, then have to take it apart and then put the piece that you were missing. Oh, no, no, that, in, that, that, that in was the mechanic simulator as well. You can certainly, oh, okay. you, can, yeah. you, can, you can miss pieces out for sure. Um, but yeah, so if you, if you want to know the difference between a carburetor and a catalytic converter, you know, I'll, I'll put some videos up at somewhere and you can, you can check it out. I don't know the difference. <laughs> so I would be interested to see it. I said, if you want to know, I mean, some people, yeah. some people don't know, but don't care. So I'm telling you, I would want to see that. <laughs> uh, all right. That's my intro. So why don't I kick off into, into the show then? Amazing. Three right. minutes short. Three minutes to spare. Yeah. No worries. Previously on Rogue Trader Tidevine, uh, the Hand of Calixus and Eternal Praetorian arrive in the Snowfear system. We see the first shopping montage in some time as the crew hits up the local merchants of Snowfear Magna. Uh, the crew meet with Precinct Marshal Firehead Constantine at Harlock's Folly, learning more about the unquiet issue on the planet. Sister Dawn flies to the top of a building to capture an apparent assassin and brings her to the oh, rest yeah. of the crew. And finally, the assassin's allies arrive and reveal themselves to be Spectre Cell 17, a secret inquisitorial team with a mission on Sinophia. But is their mission what they claim? Thought for the day, seek no reward, but the satisfaction of your master. So I yeah. believe when we left off, the plan was to go <laughs> to the clockwork court. Yes. Yes. So I can go touch some stuff. <laughs> is everyone, everyone else okay with this? I did want to talk to the captain about a slightly a slight modification of the plan. So okay. keep in mind, you, you, you're in a cramped tank with a bunch of other people. So yeah. you want to have a quiet conversation. It's going to be outside the tank or in, in code. No, I don't care if anybody over here is. Um, <clears throat> Lord Commodore, let me just recap what's happening right now. If I'm remembering correctly from several minutes ago, we've learned that the super evil undead warp stuff is happening underneath the Arbite station we just left. And we are headed toward the creepy clockwork court, which is a government building that we are going to not break into, but attempt to seek legal access into to investigate stuff. And we're bringing these people because... That was never properly explained to me why they're still in this tank and not dead. So we can confirm them, converse, converse with them, and they also give us directions to the place we need to go. I'm pretty sure I could stop outside and talk to a guy named Brock to find directions to where we need to go. It's not a hidden building. It's, it's a government building. That would not be very difficult. Well, if you don't want to kill them, that's fine. It's, they said my name, and that makes me kind of nervous. They might come in handy when we investigate the Arbitace precinct. Okay. I <clears> notice, <throat> Lord Commodore, that everywhere we go, we attempt no level of subtlety and leave a trail of wreckage behind us. <laughs> I wonder who's Are you this. bringing this up now after we've already <laughs> discussed that there's no point of us to show a level of subtlety? I just have a alternative path available uh, coming up. Now, James, what kind of government building was this? Is this the administration building that the... No, so think of it like a like a parliament house. It's, it's, it's all like Congress. It's where, it's where yes. the po politicians actually go to, you know, to, to discuss laws, etc. But they keep records there. But it's also there. where... They do keep some records there. There's, there's also an administration headquarters as well. And uh, this is also the uh home location of the sagacity that's yes. her title yes uh i just had it in my notes and now i don't know where i'm looking for it what was her name again uh her name is euphreme uh, euphreme tassel okay so um i lay out a plan where i we go in together as a rogue trader crew and I break apart as part of my cover, although it's not really a cover because I actually want to do it um, for my my uh, bounty hunter part of my job. And I hold up my slate of bounties and say, Lord Commodore, 
one thing we haven't been doing throughout all of this is keeping track of Evangeline. She's several steps ahead of us. We've made no attempt to discern her plans. I think we should figure out what she did on this world when she was here. I mean, it's the reason why she's several steps ahead of us because she had a 10 year head start. But yes, I think I we need to start mean. piecing together her plan. Indeed. I would like to look up records and my capacity as a mercenary bounty hunter, which is very real is a job I actually hold and still have a license for. And may I add one suggestion to your plan? My god. <laughs> yeah, you're so excited that this plan is actually happening. Of course, Lord Commodore. Take someone with you that can go through records easily. I look at everyone in the car, and then I look at T Spectre 17. Do any of them seem like snobby... What, what are you shaking yeah. your head? No, Adrian. Because I asked last time specifically yeah. where if they had a team was. savant. Yeah. yeah, and 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 they were described as a kill team. So I, mean, I literally have literacy as a skill. So I, I think we all do. Oh really? Okay. Uh, I could be wrong. I keep looking over, and my yeah. eyes slide over to Rosen, <laughs> our <laughs> astropath, <laughs> and I go, "Hey." You good with books and records and stuff? Uh, yes. Yes, right. I can. Are you still, are you, are you one of the ones that's in deep pain whenever you're around Cade? And I put my hand around Cade. Shoulders. <laughs> it's, I wouldn't describe it as pain. It's definitely uncomfortable. I mean, okay. first off, so you can remember, so, so Rosen relies upon the war, uh, his, his ability to see, yes. so he's functionally blind if yep. Kane is around. Yeah. Okay, M makes it hard for reading records. I know, I know, but I definitely want to send Cade with the other one. Also, none of us really like being around Cade. Uh, I mean, Pierre when you say care. that, Adrian, I'm like, be quiet, Adrian. Don't talk shit about my son. I'm uh, look. It's just a. It's it's a fact. You know, it used to bother me, but then I got used to it. I, I I never saw what other people's problem was with I, I nod towards the Lord Commodore's if he's a very wise man. I say, Cade, I'm going to need you to go with Adrian and stay close to him and make sure he doesn't die. The only thing I can say about Cade is right. he felt like he had a very punchable face. And not in the good way. <laughs> what is this? Are you Ratosaurus now? <laughs> that was that was a callback. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Alright, you're with me, Rosen. And you'll be able to see this time, which would be a new thing on your missions. Thank you, Master. Master. <laughs> Bullet. All right. I give a dirty look to the Psyblade warrior and their miss. We're like, yeah, that's right, bitch. <laughs> your Psyblade ain't going nowhere. Yeah, at least that, that particular psychic can has had natural eyes, though, so it can say, well, you yeah, should that's... find the mask. Yeah, I don't he... care if you can see or not. I'm, I'm worried about his deadly sword. That's okay, we have a dawn. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm the one who keeps getting stabbed, Pondo. Yeah, you... I'm the one who keeps getting stabbed. <laughs> that, I mean, the, the previous statement still applies. I... We have a dawn. I, I did <laughs> being... get... Well, so I think I think repairing having Nero's soul sucked out is is a little bit more difficult. <laughs> oh, one last thing to mention, Lord Ca Commodore, that I never actually mentioned. There's a secret gremlin on board the ship that's been repairing things uh, up to spec, but not in code. Okay. It's just been two episodes. I felt like I should mention it at some point. I don't really know why I haven't mentioned it. Does, does Ivy know of this? She's the one who told me. Has she been investigating further on it, or she's just been leaving? She has. Okay. So she just wanted to make sure that the command staff, specifically you, knew. Okay. Is it a major problem? Nope. So minor that it took me two episodes to remember to tell you. Very minor, in fact. Good. Because if it was that major problem, we would have issues. If it was a major problem, I would have called you there immediately. It's fair enough. You're reliable on that. Thank you. Are All right, there the, uh, <laughs> they, they pull, you pull up out in front of this building. 
So it is clearly a government building, but also quite an ostentatiously designed one. So it's all like white marble, whereas the rest of this place is predominantly grey stone. Um, it is like like a large step front up to columned uh, walls into the main building. Uh, and then you can also see various bits of clockwork machinery, mainly so mainly clocks, but also just other things like, uh, think about when you get like this really grand clocks that have the little uh, tableaus that play out mechanically every hour, um, that sort of stuff, you know, like there's all sort of mechanical show pieces uh, uh, built onto the building as well. Uh, there's also uh, in front of the building, a plinth for a statue. And you can sort of see like the feet of two statues that were facing each other, but they've been smashed off at their shins and, and clearly some time ago because all the rubble has been removed, just leaving the plinth and the, and the two vacant, uh, uh, feet here uh and there's people in robes coming in and out of this building on a pretty regular basis as well like it seems a, a well traveled building all right i go to find somebody who looks like their job is like senatorial page parliamentarian person who can tell me where to look up records specifically someone who looks like they're very easy to intimidate Okay, so you, you find an old man walking up the stairs wearing like an administrator's robes. He has like those little pizza glasses on his face that like just sit oh, below perfect, the eyes. Perfect. Does his face uh, look approachable? Uh, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Gray, like gray balding paint. You know, um, uh, with with a with a definite hunch you only get from leaning over books you like your whole life. I stop him on the stairs. I say, "Hey, uh, yes, I'm a bounty hunter for the rogue trader that just arrived on planet." I'm looking for records of a traveler who came here 10 years ago and caused some problems. Where can I find out more about what they did when they were here? Oh, um, well, the records are here. If you follow me, I'll take you to the halls. Lucky that I found just the person I'm looking for. Come on, Inspector Rosen, my <laughs> partner detective. All right. I pull out a notepad that I've had since season one and occasionally use and begin flipping to a blank page. Okay. It's crime. You got one of those those space pens or you got one of those pencils? I got a pencil. The last entry is from like six months ago. (laughs) (laughs) Way longer than that. Like two two years ago. The last last crime (sighs) I had to solve was the location of the 13th station. Uh, so you start following this old and quite slow man as he's the sort of, yeah, he's, he's that sort of age where he's going to go upstairs, like step up a step and then bring his other foot up to the same step. Oh, I offer to help him up. I'm a polite. Oh, okay. Gentleman. Okay. Yeah. No All right. Yeah. I will throw this old man up the stairs. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm a baron. I can't be doing things like that. Lord right, the, rest, the rest of you, while, while Nero and Rosen are doing this, what's the plan? Was the age uh, I was going to suggest uh, that we go take a look at the clocks. Excellent. Let's go. Does the uh, inquisitorial cell come with us, or do they? They well, they're sort of at your like they're in your vehicle right now, but they're mm-hmm. I mean, what, what, like they're probably just going to sit in your vehicle while you guys. Or they're not going to talk to Wally, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, if you want them to come, they will. Otherwise, they'll wait around somewhere nearby until you're ready to catch meet up with them again. There's there. Yeah. They clearly, you guys have still got business together. Smoke him, smoke him if you got him. We'll be right back. Okay, no worries. So let Wally be incredibly uncomfortable and appreciate our company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so are we taking Cade? Because last time we went into one of these places, it didn't work until Cade was not there, right? So That's a good point. I'd also point out that when Cade wasn't there, a fucking demon spawned. <laughs> I, I, again, I'm not worried because we have a dog. Yeah. The, the the melee half of, of our uh, fuck shit up team is still here. So. Well, I told Kay to stay with Adrian. You're going to have to counterman that if you... Um, I And I'm actually going to. Uh, Kay, stay with um, uh, Wally. the Spectre cell and Wally. Okay. okay. You will do that then. Make the other oh. psyker feel uncomfortable. 
All right. Bingo. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're fairly confident if they if they if that they really wanted to kill Kate and Wally, that wouldn't have too much trouble. Yeah, probably. No, even, even without. I like, the idea that, <laughs> I like the idea that they're smoking and it's like, oh, these cigarettes taste really good. Kate walks around the corner, it's like, these cigarettes taste like shit now. I want. I don't know why. <laughs> Wally's just outside of the tank where they can't see him. <laughs> um. All right. So as each both groups entered the building, um, so the building itself is is square in construction. But once you go inside, it's sort of a at the top level where you come up to the top of the stairs, like a corridor which goes around the entire outer edge, and then the majority of the building is a big open central area that's sort of like a theater in the round. So um, tiered seating going down to a stage in the middle, which is obviously like the platform from where someone might conduct parliament or um, take a vote, for example. Uh, I mean, you can see in there, like, it's, it's it's all open archways rather than. I mean, there are doors there, but they're all swung open because it's a, basically a public building. Um, uh, and so you can see that the central stage uh, is elevated above an open space. Like, imagine where you might have like an orchestra pit in a in a theatre, but beneath that, all you can see is a whole bunch of clockwork machinery down beneath the central stage and there's like a little little bridge that crosses over from the where the peaked or where the tiered seats are to the central stage area as well but otherwise it's you can sit all around it um, and there's like a like a podium and um equipment there for like vox casting on the stage as well there's no current session of parliament like no one's actually like giving a, a speech right now but there are groups of people that are sitting in chairs together conversing uh in the central hall as well um and then you've sort of got like so where you're where you're being led near is you're led down some stairs from the main corridor on the outside and the space underneath the tiered seating is more offices and storage halls um and so you're being led down through like the the not I mean it's not the public can't go here, but the public have no reason to go here for most of the time. It's more just sort of administration corridors, and you see lots of signage about um, record halls, that sort of thing. Um, and, and this guy's clearly taking you to like a record hall that covers the the period of time you're interested in. Yep, a whole hall devoted to ten years ago. Yep, <laughs> January through June. <laughs> So, for the rest of you that are upstairs still, what do you, what's your uh, like? You've come inside now. Um, nobody's sort of nobody's approached you yet. Well, they're probably based on your finery. People have looked your way, and there's probably some hush words going on. Who's that sort of thing? Oh, okay. I don't think Pierre cares. You just <laughs> yeah, we're just scrolling in. Mm-hmm. I don't even feel like trying to roll right now. Okay, I mean, you're, in, <laughs> you're inside. Fail it. You, you, you're inside, uncontested. Nobody's approached you. What do you want to do? Um, essentially, I want to inspect as much of the cogs as possible, or maybe ascertain or take a guess that around this section that uh, Angeline took something as one of the requirements uh, for. The ritual right yeah okay um give me a it was okay has anybody here got common law tech first off i don't think any of you guys are actually common law tech no. uh, i don't know if i have common law tech i do have tech use um i'll take I, a tech use of, tech yeah I'll, oh. I'll take i'll take an archaeo tech at plus 10 and a tech use at minus 10. okay can i contemplate it Sure. Pull a JD. Look into the sky. Ba, 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 I ba, do ba, it. Let ba, that go. Ba, oh wow, I rolled a one. All right, yeah. this is this is a strong comparison to yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> no, like last week. Okay, so you can tell that the various clockworks you can identify here all have a, a variety of different manufacturers, and they're different different variety of different ages, variety of different materials. Uh, with your natural one there, I'm going to say that you cannot find a single piece of technology here which resembles the clockwork technology you found on Quartus. Oh, so it's not the same. Interesting. I mean, for one, there are people inside of this thing who aren't mutating at a rapid rate, so... Uh... Even just down to like, you know, like every maker of clockworks has their own little sort of signature sort of style. And it, this is a fine collection of clockworks, clearly from all over the galaxy. 
but uh, you don't find any pieces that you, that you can see in any publicly accessible areas that match the same styling as the clockworks, which ran the building in Qantas. Okay. Interesting. So well, I... while, you're, while you're examining the pieces closely, a, um, a man approaches you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Are you interested in these clockworks? A fair amount, yes. Are you looking to purchase? <gasps> mm, it varies on price. Uh, I could fetch a catalog for you if you like. I have a catalog if you would like. Sure. All right. Could I have someone bring you some some tea or something while you, while you wait? I uh, know we'll be fine. A very part. <laughs> part sort of looks looks at everybody else and sort of like, okay, I guess that you all are fine then as well because he said we're all fine, and he wanders <laughs> off. Um, he returns about five minutes later with uh, like a printed stack of uh, bound dot matrix paper. Oh, not bad. Like you know, like still still not not like perforated, but not 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 torn. Um, the which corners is just like a battle circle. No, like corners, so. no, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is basically like a just a printed catalog of all the clockwork items, which is a, it's a prestigious list. Like it's not sorry, prodigious list. Uh, not not just what you see here, but a lot of different things. Um, all of which they've listed like a value. You know, so it's almost like a. Um, it's less of a museum and more of a, a an auction house. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, in in any of like the taking somewhat a quick glance through anything it might resemble the work of the Harlock line. Uh, only that it lists all the artists, and you don't see any reference to to Harlock or anything else that you can connect with. The, the what you've been pursuing i can't help but to notice there's nothing as far as crafted by harlock himself by the harlock oh. themselves it's very rare we get harlock's pieces in um we had one oh it's probably two years maybe ago? three years ago no, no, no about two or three years ago we sold we sold a piece oh. that was the last piece i remember going through um I I've only got the records of the current stock. If you'd like, I could I could speak with the sagacity and record your details. And if we'd find some um, some more pieces of Harlocks, we could get in contact with you. Do you happen perhaps, to know perhaps who the seller or who purchased the last piece? Uh, the sagacity would have that information. It's not in not in my system. I only look after current stock. Uh, if you can get me information in the past. 10, 11 years of purchases of the Harlock cogs and gears. Well, that, that's that's it. I but I only look after the current stock. If you need past sales history, you need to speak with the, with the sagacity. Oh, I was just going to guess that you do it for me, but I guess I'll speak to them. Oh, um. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Do not worry. I don't yeah. mean to trouble you. I was going to use you as an intermediate functionary, right, yeah. but sure, I'll do your that's job right. for you if you want. That's fine. Right. This guy, this guy oh. is like not not in my PD. I'm not... Yeah. <laughs> not my zoo. Not my monkeys. All right. Do you know yeah, how many people are buying clocks from me every day? I'm a busy man. You can do that shit yourself. I mean, he'll offer to take you to the sea, the sagacity, if you like. <laughs> I'll walk uh, you through the door, but you got to talk yourself. <laughs> and for reference, all these gears are way overpriced. He just closed the book and starts like, okay. come on, let's go talk to Sugiasi. Okay, no worries. <laughs> AP, uh, yes. you are taken into a, a records hall, uh, which for the most part has got a... So it's they're actually relatively small rooms, but with a lot of data because they seem to have digitized all their data onto some sort of... Um, mass media storage is that legal? and there is it sorry is that legal it depends on on the well but in any case what what is recorded here is stored on some sort of media storage i'm, I'm asking if I, I, the adeptus mechanicus shows up are they going to be like well this is heresy blow up the whole world. oh no 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 okay so, so the like the, th the stuff that's here looks like it's i mean first of there's there's a servitor like basically okay. here, like a, a, a computer console with an attached servitor that all right i thought that i was looking at it. some some yeah. of that logisticians 
heresy. Yeah, that tech, that yeah. tech heresy. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. know they're operating in the area. I'm just trying to be careful. I don't want to so, look so, at so, any heresy. I just got rid of all my corruption. So you know, like the Mission Impossible style data stacks with like the robot arm that goes and gets the data you want when you want it. Think of think of a steampunk, you know, version of that, basically, like a a a, a the bottomized person attached to a machine whose arms reach out and get you data sites based yeah, on sure. So some poor weird. guy's some poor guy's torso and it just <laughs> slings him around the room as he grabs much. these data slates. Yeah. Uh, but there is like there's like a console there where you, the idea would be you would look what whatever data you want and the the server would go and get it for you. Sure. Uh I ask my companion what his name is. Uh his name is uh Horace. Horus. 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 Let's use this thing. Let's find the records I'm looking for. I, uh, oh, no, sorry. I was using my scruff mercenary voice. <clears throat> yes, that's right. Horus. Let's uh, use these record machines. I'm not that good at this kind of thing. I need to rely on... I slap him on the back very gently, upstanding, <laughs> upright, scribe like people like yourself in order to do my job too. And I put my hands on the guns at my hips, keep the Imperium safe from the bad people. You certainly feel two vertebra almost break under your light slap, but- uh, Perfect. He... <laughs> my bulging biceps, you just can't stop them. <laughs> he, he sits down and, and Rosen comes over and like, Rosen starts feeding him, like, why don't you try looking for this? Or why don't you try yeah, refer to these things? Good, excellent. Um, I like having competent help to do things that my character <laughs> definitely cannot do. That's right. why I had someone go with you. <laughs> so what, no, are you using a name search at all? Or are you using a name in your search? Yeah, so we definitely know her name was or is Evangeline, but she has a second name that she got when she joined the um, Ecclesiarchy, right? Yeah, FSA. FSA. We also search for that. Okay, no worries. Uh, but we're also looking for mysterious stranger shows up to the Harlock to this building 10 years ago when weird shit starts happening and then leaves shortly after the weird shit kicks off. All right. I'm trying to cover all my bases here, James. I'm sending a wide net for the weird shit detector. No worries. Okay, so there are, in fact, records that somebody by the name of FSA came FSA. onto the planet um, about 10 years ago uh, and that uh, while they were here, they were involved in assisting in an investigation into a number of unexplained murders um pr predominantly of the murder seem to be a combination of either wealthy nobles or key underworld figures uh so there were one two three four five six seven total murders um that were investigated um so they other, other than the fact that i mean there's no details in this file about what was involved in the murders only that she was involved in investigating and that at the end of the investigation or well, the investigation resulted in the death of the former um uh precinct Planetary. marshal oh and the death and this is the precinct marshal that isn't very well thought of right uh, didn't we learn that from the current precinct marshal he didn't like him? yeah that's right yeah that's right okay Basically, he was corrupt. Um, so apparently, um, FSA did actually attend this this venue at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um, didn't actually. Um, so did meet with the sagacity, um, but didn't um, didn't buy anything uh, or apparently take anything that's on the records here. Uh, no, nothing nothing from stock anyway okay, and like, that's no. still this the same sagacity even though it's a title it's yes. the same person okay it is yep um several other questions to just kind of narrow things down real quick i quietly discuss with horus whether the undertow the, the triple crime lord syndicate was formed before or after this event uh before but certainly one of the former heads of one of those those three gangs was one of the murder victims and so like that power vacuum was filled okay you know during during the whole incident um the issue with the mandato overpowering the local marshals sorry the Man local arbites yeah i uh, sorry that said that mandato uh 
the main data are effectively the magistrates of the the world. So right. they're supposed to look after the law of the world. Yeah, and the arbitres look after laws that would affect the imperium as a whole. Right. Um, we and, heard that the Mandato basically were the ruling power, but now the Imperium yeah. is pushing back. Did that start during this incident? Or no, was that's it? that's been that's been going now for okay. over twenty years. All right. Um, ever, ever since the head of the Mandato started amassing power and effectively uh, influencing the votes to try and put puppet people into the the um, head position. And the Hollow Man situation. When did that start? Uh, that that originally started about thirteen years ago. Okay. Yep. That that was resolved at the time by the arbitres. All right. I would like to get a copy of the investigation report that FSA and the rest of the team put together. A list of anyone notable on that team. Keywords, James. I want to know keywords from there. If you're like this NPC who's been traveling with you is actually part of her team, I'm gonna be like. Oh, that's that's the person I want to know. And then I'm going to, while that's happening, I'm going to message the Lord Commodore and be like, Lord Commodore, uh, your sister met with the sagacity while she was here. The same sagacity. Hmm. We'll have to pay them a visit, man. Yeah, I they thought you were doing here. that right now. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I... We're just walking to the door right now. I'm yeah, still I love, upset I love that's who... a screen transition, right? <laughs> it's a side by side call, but then my side of the call gets pushed out of the way. What, what, what I will say, AP, though, is that uh, when you are looking into details of the investigation itself, yeah, a lot of a lot of the, like the servitor of apart of, of, of apart of those files appear to be missing. Ooh, who has the authorization to take those files out, servitor? Uh, on, only the sagacity. All right, I, I follow up with the left captain. I'm like, do not <laughs> hang up the phone. The files from the investigation your sister conducted while she was here are missing, and only the sagacity has the authorization to remove them. Oh, excellent. Okay, I'm hanging up now. I look at the servitor to make sure there's not... <laughs> now, no, okay, I turn my microbeat off. It's a flashing curtain screen, that's it. I turn my microbeat off, and then I indicate that the three of us should go get tea or, or beer, if that's what Horace is into. Uh, tea, definitely tea. Okay. Yeah, where's okay. the cafeteria in this parliamentary okay. castle? <laughs> It'll take you there to get tea. There's like, well, it's like a, it's like a tea room rather, rather than a cafeteria. Perfect. Excellent. Yep. <laughs> Just where you want to get tea. Uh, I surprising, guess... the, the, the team also does have a hookah as well, if that's what you're into. No. Okay. You say that, Hooters? Hookah. Uh, hookah. 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 Okay. Sorry. Hookah. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> All right. Um, so Pondo and everybody else, uh, this young man takes you through a set of double doors downstairs into a um, very impressive looking office. So big oak desk in the middle, um, all sorts of artistic uh, stuff around the wall. So either more clockworks or artworks uh, or tapestries, um, nice big plush leather armchairs uh, for the uh, for the desk. There's a woman sitting behind the desk, uh, currently typing at a cogitator, who looks to be probably only about thirty. Uh, so you'd guess, you know, if she was a sagacity here ten years ago, she would only been, you know, late teens, early twenties at most. Um, and then she's had a lot of augmented work being done. Um, for that being said, though, you don't, you don't see a, a large amount of cybernetics at all, other than probably just a uh, a little implant on the side, which allows her to like move, uh, like ju jeweler's um, lenses into place in front of her eye. Um, and she's wearing like impressive robes of office, uh, that have like, you know, the, the Aquila as a, um, as a brooch. Um, but, uh, she stands up when you enter. Uh, good morning. Mm. She looks to you uh, like, uh, and, the, and the, like the young man's like, "Oh, sorry, uh, this is uh, a Commodore Pierre Cowles." He looks at you to check that's right. <laughs> Pierre just nods. Yes. Uh, a rogue trader. Uh, assuming, I, I'm assuming you've told this person all this stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think inevitably someone. I was, I was about to say, I was like, "Hmm." <laughs> I think inevitably someone uh, would have had to inquire to him about it. As yeah. he was like, "Why are you here? What are you doing?" Yeah, she uh, she looks a bit surprised. Oh, a rogue trader. We don't see your kind here often. Please, please come in. I you have quite the entourage here. I don't have enough chairs. 
Indeed, she only has three chairs in front of her desk. Oh, okay. Bye. I'll stand. Don't worry. That's what I. I'll stand as well. I don't care. I just need to inquire. I want to get uh, some sales history here. Precisely, uh, people who have purchased the clockwork items of the Harlock line of the past oh. roughly 10, 11 years. You're a, you're a connoisseur of clockworks, sir. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, could I offer you a, a tea? Mint, perhaps? She like offers a little ceramic bowl to you with mints in it. No, we're fine. She offers the mint to everybody else as well. Uh, Adrian will take a mint. Okay, no worries. Yeah, Dawn, Dawn just doesn't... <laughs> just ignores it as usual. So. Um, now, uh, to be honest, uh, you probably, you, if you're aware of... Uh, Captain Harlock's work, you'd know how, how rare it is. Oh, indeed. Um, I've only sold a single piece in my tenure here. Um, and she start, she's typing it at the contract while, while, while doing this, uh, while talking to you. Um, I, I sold a piece going back about three years ago now. Yes, here it is. Uh, artifact known as the Aurum Uxorum. Uh, I sold to a, uh, a gentleman from uh, the world of Reth. Interesting. I'll just uh, for your purposes on the say so where is that in accordance? So Reth is looking for the map. It's one of these. Why is my map not loading? Stand by. Okay, Reth is down. Oh, why have I lost it? It's another pleasure world. There it is, down the very bottom. You say it is a pleasure world or is not? It is it is a pleasure world, yes. Of course it is. Yeah. Uh, here we go she turns the screen around and there's like a docket of sale there um, for an item which is listed as the Aurum uh, To and the buyer is a person with the name of Dr. Nath uh, Nathanael Feltz uh, yes can you perhaps put that on parchment for me Indeed, she hits a button and somewhere nearby you hear it <laughs> as it uh, prints out and someone, you know, she goes over and tears it off and brings it to you. Uh, can you look back about, I uh, say, 10, 11 years ago of any other pieces of I, I, line? I've, as I said, I, I'm not in my tenure and I, I've been in, in the, I've been the Sagasti here now for oh, 16 years. So none within the past 10? No, no, just just this one. Really? 16 years? You do not look like that at all. My it's the uh, the, draw, the, the drawback of a hereditary position, I'm afraid. Oh. I did... Uh, I was quite young when I, when I first took on this role. What happened to your predecessor, if you don't mind me asking? Um, so, my the, the predecessor in this particular role was my grandfather. Um, and unfortunately my, my mother passed away when I was a child. So when my grandfather passed of natural causes, uh, the role flowed to me when I was only 15 at the time. Interesting. Must've been very difficult to take over. Um, not really. No, I mean, no, I mean, I suppose I'd, I'd been educated for this role in my youth and not, <laughs> There aren't a lot of responsibilities. I mean, she's she's trying to say like I don't have I to see. do very much without yes. looking like she without saying yes. like she's lazy. Sure. <laughs> it's, it's it's fine. I understand. Sometimes your job <laughs> doesn't require much. Yeah. Now there is one thing I need to ask about. There's currently there was a previous investigation here in town about maybe again ten years ago that apparently from what I found out the files were taken out. Really? Uh, do you have any de further details on that? Uh, yeah, he'll give her the details. Okay. Oh, yes, well, there was a good reason why the files were taken out. Unfortunately, I, I can't say too much. It involves the Inquisition. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we're really good at this game, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Inquisition are bad at the game is the issue. <laughs> um, yes, I'm afraid uh, all the files were were um, 
co-opted by the the individuals involved oh, do you do you have the names of the individuals uh yes she does some checking um i've got in here an, an acolyte fsa interesting and they they removed the records from the world am, am i correct there's no place here where we can find them again uh that's correct i mean there's i can remember um she came in here that's right she took my i so she points to like a, a shelf behind it it's like, like it's like a fireplace behind her desk as well which is currently unlit um i used to keep a piece here that was my grandfather's uh was a uh small shard of mirror in a uh in, in a in a setting um that i said it was just part of i mean a lot of this artwork here has existed here before i took this role on uh she claimed that that was involved in her investigation and, and she took that under her authority um and then later i heard that she was here investigating you heard about the murders there were some murders here going back about a decade now a few key nobles uh, yes, anyway, yes. I understand that somehow my little piece of mirror was relevant to that, and uh, but she apparently solved it and went on her way. About about how big was this piece of mirror? Um, give me a second. She she goes to a cogitator and um, turns it around again. I, I took a pic. I took some pics of it in the past in case I would in case I could sell it. Um, so it's clearly like a, a broken shard of mirror. Like, yeah, it, it's j jagged edges, like from a smash mirror. Right. Um, although it's been put in as like a case with like a gilt lining. So like she, she honestly had no idea why anybody venerated this piece of mirror, mm -hmm. except for the fact that it was clearly something that her grandfather had chosen to box up and put somewhere safe. And your um, grandfather never mentioned anything to you about the mirror. Uh, no, we we had a difficult relationship in my youth. Is are there any visual cues with this mirror that would give a um, that it would be part of the same mirror that we saw on um, not Fink's world but uh, Abandoned Hope? Um, or, or, or was that a was that a picture or was that a, a painting? No, that was, no, so was Abandoned Hope was an orb. It was a black orb. Yeah, Abandoned Band Hope was the orb. Well, but we we went and saw a painting somewhere that that yeah, Abbey of the Dawn had a yes, mirror. Yes, th there we go. There we go. That, yeah. That's yeah. what I was looking yeah. for. That was okay. a painting. Yeah, it was I, a burned okay. painting. Okay. I have a theory out of character that this might be the talisman, which is one of the three elements she needed: talisman, guide, and pattern. That's mm. what I was thinking. Okay. Just wanted to make sure yeah. we're all on the same page and that the audience knows as well. I'm going back. Uh, would there be any sort of idea that like a piece of mirror would have any sort of significance to the Harlock line that I can um, muster up? I, I, not like, I mean, so I, I take like a forbidden law heresy or forbidden law warp roll. Um, if you want to do those, uh, I'll give you just plus zero. Uh, is this something I can roll as well? Or not? Yeah, yeah, if you're here. I will re-roll that. That seems like something I want to re-roll. You said Never mind, I don't want to know. <laughs> heresy? All right, I had or the one good roll. Or forbidden law warp, either of those two is fine. 4.3. Ah, okay, so there you go. You've got, you can't connect this mirror to the Harlock legacy specifically. What you do know is that mirrors often, mir mirrors as items are, are able to be used by a lot of different sort of powers. You know, something about the inherent way that they reflect reality indicates that they, you know, they, they are, they are useful items when it comes to the machinations of the warp, um, especially around either the gods of magic or, or um, deceit. So either, either like Z Zinch or Sanesh, both have mo there are multiple artifacts that have existed that are bound to mirrors or entities that have been bound to mirrors. Yeah, I'll um you know uh, stand next to the Lord Captain and and you know give him this information quietly. Well, I can't think of any more information that we need from here. I leave you too. Oh, um, well, thank you for visiting. If there's anything thank else I can help with, please uh, let me know. I'll be here. Absolutely. You've been very much, very much of a help. 
unlike the gentleman running the auction, he didn't do much oh. help at all. You, you, um, you didn't like Ravis's, uh, he didn't provide your needs well? No, no. See, I, I had to come to you personally when, you know, all he could have done was just relay the information to me, but that's fine. Yeah. Well, I'm at least glad he did because I got to meet you, but I will, I'll have a word with him about it. Thank you. All right. Yeah, I'll get back to work, but it's uh, been a pleasure. Yes. It was well. uh, right. Pierre just goes to leave. All right. As, as you guys leave as well, like she goes back to work and, and she's clearly going back to what she was doing before, but because her computer still slightly turned from when she turned it to you previously, you can see like she's just loaded the equivalent of 40K hearts on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so she's playing some some <laughs> regicide against the computer. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Forty K solitaire. Yeah. Minesweeper. <laughs> Space pinball machine. Oh uh, no, it'd probably be like fantasy pinball machine. Yeah. Okay, I guess we will meet back up with Nero in the Chimera. Oh, Nero's having tea with Horus and and uh yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so then we, we get out to the chimera and we go, where's Nero? Nero, you have about one minute to get back to the chimera before we leave you. Uh, <laughs> I sent back Lord Commodore. I didn't realize your meeting would be cut so short. I'm building important uh, bonds here on the planet. Are you sure I can't spare a few more minutes? 40 seconds. Okay. All right. I just uh, in high gothic I grant my blessing to Horus uh, and pick Rosen up and carry him on my back is, is, there, any, any, is there any um, uh, thing you'd like to like in the conversation you had with Horus you know over tea and, and unless he stopped Rosen will partake of the uh, uh, of the hookah but do you want to ask any questions about the world in general at all he might i mean he's a person living here he might have opinions memories he's old ah uh, damn it james i feel like you're offering me a really interesting lifeline and i don't know what to do with it unfortunately or, or he could just be like a grandpa simpson and start telling you about you know you could ask him a question and he'll start telling you a story about when he used to wear an onion on his belt, which was a style at the time. Was a style at the time <laughs> yeah it was a <laughs> custom at the time um That's all, yeah. I want to obliquely check to see if he knows about the Inquisition. Okay. I, I um, never mention it by name. I'm never like, oh, hey, have you encountered the Inquisition during your time here? But, you know, they do try to... My understanding is that normal people shouldn't know about them, so... Yeah, I mean, his knowledge... I mean, he's just an academic as such, so he yeah. studied he study history, but... You know, for him, the Inquisition is like his his concept of it is nothing like what it is. For him, it's just it's another it's another investigative arm of the Arbitres, whatever the case would be. But they don't like unlike the Arbitres, which come to a world, the Inquisition sits back somewhere in a tower and directs investigations. And yep, they have lots of power, but they're never going to be a part of his life, so he's not really worried about them. Good, good. I feel the rosary in one of my armor pouches. <laughs> And I'm like, you're right. You probably will never encounter an agent of the Inquisition. <laughs> it's better for you to believe that they're not real. Then we get the call and I snatch Rosen up and we leave in the least polite okay. way possible. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <clears throat> do, do you tell us as you go and say, we were never here? No. No. <laughs> no, like I said, I give I give him a blessing in High Gothic because I'm a noble okay. and he's done he's done good work for me as a public servant. All right. And had important in... plot critical information that allowed us to get more dialogue unlocks. Okay. <laughs> I want to treat him like he's uh... a real human rather than the the NPC dialogue <laughs> machine I initially started with. <clears throat> All right. Everyone's Nero, back in the chimera. Nero gets back to the chimera and goes, "Why wasn't? No, oh, wait. I don't know that Cade wasn't here. All right. I just go. Good job, Cade. <laughs> yes, Cade. Hey. Well done." He nods and sits down again. All right. I go sit down next to Cade and I start asking him about uh, how schooling's been lately. And that's our ambient background dialogue. Okay. 
I guess uh, next stop would be going back to the Harlock's Folly and then try to see if we can get into the basement. Wait, sir, what happened to... Weren't we supposed to do something here? And I, like, look at all of the other Inquisition Acolytes, right. and I'm just like, you know, the thing we came to this planet to do... It wasn't I, here. It wasn't here. Really? Where is it? The Folly, Somewhere else. I imagine. Wasn't that the Folly? No, this was the Clockwork Court. All right, so you... <sighs> the Folly is where the Arbitres are. Yes. This was the museum, now auction house of just random gears and cogs. And so you believe that the thing we were coming here to get is actually at the place we originally were? No. Maybe. I do. But uh, I could be wrong. So, just to be clear, no. if we don't know where it is, why would we go back to the folly and get ourselves involved with and I gesture to the Inquisition team their problem? Don't get me wrong, sir. You know I love killing things, and I love solving problems for the Imperium, but your time is valuable, and we do have a little bit of the end of the universe thing going on. You know, that's every day. Yes, sir. I agree completely. It's just, you know, sometimes 10-year missions creep up and on the, you faster than you know. And the end of the universe thing at least got delayed by one season. I don't understand what you're saying, sir. I look around confused. The fourth wall attack on my part. If we are not going back to the folly, where would you suggest we go instead, Nero? Oh, well, for my personal goals, I would love to go back to the folly and start the killing. But that is not in the Lord Captain's best interest if the thing we came here to find is not actually there. Do we have any other leads? I wasn't in the conversation with you. How do we know it's not there? Did you actually trust that person? Because it seems kind of like that person might have been influenced by your sister. Have we even talked about what we're going to do with your sister? Like, what's the protocol, right? Like, do we kill her on sight? Do we, you know, do one of those classic theatrical, join me and together we can rebuild the Harlock line. Brother and sister. Is this a conversation we're having in front of the inquisitorial cell? Oh, that's a good point. Well, let's say we were all saying it in, in Rogue Trader. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Does all of them understand our Rogue Trader camp by by chance? Like they got the pamphlet. I mean, they're, they're certainly no. Like it's your own. It's your own specific okay. language. But I mean, the thing the thing that's always hard to factor out of out of ciphers is proper nouns. Yeah. So, so you know, if you if I say Harlock, Har yes, I specifically yeah, say Harlock, and I take the longest way to say it as well. <laughs> so, so I'm like, together we can rebuild the Harlock <laughs> line, and I do it while looking at them because I'm like, yeah, you said my name earlier. Now I'm gonna say a name. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they certainly exchange some glances. Ah, you know, yeah. I, I significant gesture. NPC glances. <laughs> <laughs> That, that I, got their attention, sir. Seriously, what is our, like, you know, what is our plan the, here? Are we supposed to woo the, her or what? The files of the investigation were removed. Um, I was under the impression that we were going to kill her. They were removed? By who? The sagacity? By her. Aphasia. <gasps> but how? How did she get the authority to do this? Was it she, when she was an acolyte underneath Inquisitor Pendergast? <laughs> I think you. I think you already she know the answer. She was under uh, Pendergast. Girl. She was. Uh, was, or was. Are we talking about old man Pendergast? No. No, no she no. worked for Pendergast, didn't she? That's where they crossed paths. No, she worked alongside right. Pendergast. She worked alongside her. Yes, yeah. for Inquisitor Flavian. And yeah. then uh, she she uh, split off at some point ten years ago. Yeah. Okay, I was mostly right. Slightly right. And then Pendergrass became a romance. I still say Pendergrass. It's a complicated story. Yeah. Are you? Are you? So asking, what, was, what was that? Sorry, Pondo. That's like then Pendergrass became a romanceable character. But that's besides the point. It's <laughs> DLC. DLC, bro. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, obviously, the direct intention at the moment is to kill her as, as much as fast as possible. Okay. All right, so say that, I'm, I just looked at Kate and I'm like, that's our plan. And we just kill her as quickly as possible. At the moment, <laughs> I'm still trying to do as much as I can to research into the Tyrant Star to see what its effects could be and what it had on her. 
if it somehow oh, you should probably be said tyrant star as a pronoun <laughs> Oh, that's true. Yeah, proper Man. proper noun. Yeah. The dark super bad son. <laughs> well, they know I'm I'm under. Uh, they yeah, they know you're yeah, underneath gonna... the guy who researches that thing for a living. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like I don't know if he would really care if they knew because they probably already knew what he's you know about. Because that's. <laughs> All right, I switch back to English. I'm oh, sorry, low Gothic, and I say, "All right, so that's how we're going to deal with that problem until you've given more thought to it." That still brings us back. Why would we go to? Why would you go to the folly in order to deal with this problem? What makes it worthwhile for this group for your rogue traderiness? In case there is something there is, is in that basement that I can utilize. Okay. To save us a trip from going to another pleasure planet. Then we should probably call our resident navigator and have her prepare the ritual we need to deal with the situation. Yes. She's already there. Okay. She's I'm the saying, one that I'm saying we need to call her. I know she's there. I look okay. at I look at her. I'm like, okay. I know she's there. There's probably I've, I've done warp stuff before. There's probably a ritual involved that she needs to start drawing chalk or killing a chicken or something okay we need to call her and let her know to prepare okay uh i turned to kate and i'm just like i'm sorry you're probably gonna have to sit this one out he, he nods solemnly. Right. you're gonna stay here with wally unless we have to take the come air into battle in which case we're gonna leave you with my new friend brock it's in the basement I don't think we can take the Chimera with us. You'd be surprised where you can get a tank, sir. I mean, if you just drive it into the first floor... There's only a want. <laughs> I guess he's driving through the building, go above it, it will eventually crush under I turn to look at Adrian and, and say, it's not like this thing's rated to handle four and a half Gs, huh? Exactly, sir. It's a... Uh... Heavy First vehicle. low gravity planet we go to, or oh, high gravity planet, you'll be getting Kade to do like several push ups <laughs> in high gravity. Make him super strong. Anyway. So, what's the plan? I, we take. I, hey, you, Inquisitors or Acolytes, is this a thing you want to get involved in? Dealing with this hollow man, undead people situation that started in the Harlock or the yeah, the Harlock's folly. That's what it's called. Yes. So yeah, the, you guys are getting involved in this, or what's what's the deal? You've been standing in the back of this vehicle, looking pretty weird for like twenty minutes. Well, if you can, this is Hella speaking. Yeah. If you can, if we can find something down there, we can do something with. We said we we've been down there before, but found nothing, found no connection that's allowed us to actually take any action. But if you can find something and we can stop this, then that solves all of our problems. I I look at him. I'm just like all of your problems because you've been here for 10 years right i mean all all of our as in everybody in this vehicle yes but i just want to make yeah. sure that all of your problems will stop here this is the only thing you're on this world to do is to solve this one problem <laughs> That's Nero, right. i feel like you're beating a Dead give me, give, it, give me, um, at this point, give me, uh, scru said. scrutiny rolls. Scrutiny rolls. No, scru I'll just fight straight scrutiny. Okay. Don't worry. I'm still bad at that. <laughs> Sorry, I'll give I'm, it a shot. I'm okay. I am decent. Uh, I will fate point to reroll that. Hey, I did actually pretty good. Okay. I rolled a six. Sweet. I. Hondo with the rolls. Don't tonight. bother. Don't say that. Because I immediately rolled an 87 after before this. Ooh, you succeeded. Yep. Okay, so Adrian and, and um, Pierre can both tell that yeah, he's definitely concealing something. Pierre, with your with your three degrees, this you can tell that it's not like he thinks that it's something that you know that that would be important for you to know. Just that he's so used to concealing it, he's to conceal, you know he's, he's going to keep concealing it anyway. It's not this is this is not this is not something against you is to not reveal this. It's more a case of just I, I wouldn't tell. Of course, you I have this. it. Yeah. Classic, classic Inquisition stuff where so used to keeping everything secret that they keep secrets all the time. I feel like I've seen this movie before. 
as a CIA officer lying to his girlfriend. He doesn't know where the line stops. <laughs> I can sense as there's something that you are keeping from us, but aren't really realizing it. Nero looks shocked. He's like, she seems perfectly trustworthy to me, sir. Right. Um, he is a member of the Inquisition. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. I know. I can't refute that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you mentioned the word Harlock several times in your code of conversation. Indeed. Obviously, we got, we're going to Harlock's. We're going to Harlock's folly, but you said that openly afterwards in Low Gothic. I'm curious as to what you were saying about Harlock that you didn't want us to hear about. I'm curious what you were saying about me that you didn't want us to hear about. Acadia told me that she'd heard of you before. Okay. I set up a little straight and go, oh, really? Yes. What did she hear? Uh, so uh, she pops in now. She said, they, they say that uh, you never miss. Oh, so when the team sniper says that, I'm like, oh, look around, motherfuckers. <laughs> look, who, look who got recognized by the Inquisition. And then I say, they're correct. Some say I'm in the rankings for the top sniper of the universe. You know, millennial change is coming up soon. Just want to be at the top of that list. Damn it, Don! Yeah. All right. I look for right, the so, captain, so, too. So, 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 so she says to you, where, where is your rifle? I gesture to all of the weapons I have on me. He gestures <laughs> to his heavy bolter. No, no. Well, <laughs> uh, so when she asks for where my Nira rifle is, this. I indicate to the missile tube that is on Cade's back. Yeah. He's a sniper. Oh, my God. What to be, essentially. I don't know where he got the idea to equate a missile launcher to a sniper rifle, but... it solves all of the problems and half the time <laughs> the, the so the so at this point the um the the stormtrooper one of them leads over to the to the the, the girl and he's like he's right you know it's actually a very effective sniper rifle I mean, he's like shut up Statistically, I, didn't ask, yes. I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't ask you dick yeah. <laughs> Well, now we see personality. I like these people now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm telling you. They're like a second player character group. <clears throat> I I take my, um, whatever it's called, the hell rifle off of my back and indicate that that's what okay. I use when I'm not missile blast. I, have I ever actually used the missile launcher? No. Not not yet. You've I feel like we've seen him practice yet. with it, but I've never actually fired it in combat yet. Nope. Nope. Uh, because we, we've only been in like close quarter situations since you've got it. It's true. Fucking Gleemo's hand cannon from Cyberpunk, but this thing's around the <laughs> Hey, just remember that James's character in Wrath and Glory was like a sniper, and I set up situations where a sniper rifle would actually be useful. Just remember yeah. that. Yes, that's yes, pretty tough hilarious. to do in a tabletop RPG. I think it was like there's one shot at like 75 meters or no, something. No, there was a was... cross map shot where he fucking yeah. crippled my the the boss of the whole map, whose job was to <laughs> run really quickly across the map and show up. And James was just like, "All right, I shoot them now. They're crippled." And I'm like, "No!" <clears throat> anyway, they were asking us about the Harlock. Why we mentioned it so much? Yeah, so so, 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 so yeah, at that point, yeah, Helos is also like, yeah, back back to what we're actually talking about. <laughs> <I'm curious>. oh, <laughs> man. I think Pierre was uh, me was originally wanting him just to drop it so he didn't have to make up something, but uh, <clears throat> obviously, you know who I work for, and obviously, his interest lies within the Harlock line. Though, there's been apparently someone cut, someone going around getting a lot of essentially knickknacks of the Harlock line that I've been trying to track. So, so you're looking for somebody who is looking for Harlock's possessions? Essentially. Do you think they are a member of the Harlock family? Or are they truly It's hard gone? to say. The family line's been dead for decades almost centuries i believe he um he's like like pulls his pack around and opens it up 
and um, pulls out two uh, like vellum scrolls that are currently like have like inquisitorial seals on them and offers you them to look at. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a trap. Uh... Like he, he, he passes, he, he's, he's passing you these two scrolls to look at. What could go wrong, Pondo? This is how they find out that I'm actually hard luck. Look at the scrolls. And, and, and we have a fucking gunfight in the back of a chimera. Don't worry, we'll uh, win. Yeah, I know we uh, will. Yeah, he'll not know it, not suspecting anything, really. Uh, okay. He'll look at the scrolls. Okay, so both both scrolls are a um, rid of excommunication by Lord Inquisitor Zerb. Um, that gives this team authority to kill anybody that they find. Um, one, uh, so one scroll is for any member of the Sinos Rogue Trader family, uh, and the other is for any member of the Harlock Rogue Trader I family. Fucking knew it. Interesting. <laughs> I like the idea that the camera's just like from the first point in perspective. Like they hand it to you, you put it up in front, and you're like, huh, that's interesting. Pull it down, there's just a gun. Like <laughs> <laughs> in, in my notes, I, I have Spectre Cell 17. Shitty inquisitorial acolytes might be here to kill Pierre. <laughs> but they, they don't you're, know Pierre is hard. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. here's the thing. They're not <laughs> stuck in here not with us. Anything. Yeah, I'm just we're, we're not stuck in here with us. They're stuck in here with us. Lord you know, Commodore, like... what's it say? Is it? I, can I share this information that you showed me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was for these. It was like a authorization to kill people of the Symphus line. Is that what you said? Sinos. 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 Which Sinos is the family line. line which founded this world. Yeah. The Sinos line and the Harlock line. All right. So I'm just like. Well, obviously, all of us know about the Harlocks. Who are the Sinos? Who are the Sinos? Uh, I'll so, do you one better. What is the Sinos? <laughs> I can take it. <laughs> uh, Teresa Sinos was um, the founder of this world, a rogue trader during the Angerman Crusade. Um, her, the last member of her line, Anya Sinos, uh, also resided here and was an ally to Erasmus Harlock, a, a, an aide in his depravity. Hmm. She used to collect the psychers found in this world, and rather than giving them to the black ship, she would sell them to Harlock. Probably has a battery source for the tyrant star. <gasps> Thanks. Interesting. <clears throat> So was this your sort of real primary objective or your secondary objective in this case? So we came here to kill Anya Sinos and all of her line, which we did. But we were told to remain here in case any other scions of her family returned trying to seek their, try to claim their inheritance. Or likewise, if anyone happened to still survive in the Harlock line. Hmm. Man, I'm looking at Pierre, and I want to be clear that I'm significant PC glancing that Zerb knew about this shit and sent us here on purpose. He didn't send no, us here. No, no, no. These people we don't learned... work for Zerb. They work for huh? a pawn of Zerbs, though, right? No, Zerb yes, didn't send us here. Said, yeah, yeah, but Zerb, Zerb did sign these excommunication orders. Only Zerb would have the authority to put to okay. literally order the execution of an entire road okay. trader line. So, um, so he knew was, that was... kill teams were out, and one of his minions sent them here, and he probably got reports about this team. I mean, it was signed over ten years ago. So. Okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he could have at least at one point said, "Hey, there might be people <laughs> trying to kill you on a regular no. basis on our fucking side." Zerb's forgotten about these guys. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Like, it's yeah, it's it probably is. like a very big afterthought. I feel like we need to kill Zerb and replace him with someone competent. Yes, that, like, Pierre would like is, that. Yes, this is this is this is like the the kitchen timer that Zerb set ten years ago and has been going off for nine and a half years, and he just hasn't heard it. What is the timer for again? Couldn't be important. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, if, if you don't remember it, it must not have been that important. Well, James, it's a time for yep. our break. It is. If, if, if next step is to go to the folly, then it is definitely time for a break. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's, I think this conversation is just mostly over. <laughs> okay. No worries. <laughs> no one As mentioned like, that he's a Harlock. Yep. Or, or Without do, already having guns to all of their yeah. heads. <laughs> I was going to say, like, that, I, I was already going to be sticking close to that Psyker so I could melt the gun him if we needed to. But uh, well, I mean, the Psyker is null and void because of our null. Well, but we're, we're, gonna we're leaving to, the null we're, outside. Yeah, we're going to have to leave Cade behind at some point. Oh, uh, that's right. I mean, I'd rather not, but we we do have to. I think we have to, yeah. All right, we'll be back for the second half soon, I guess. It'll happen, probably.